and negative uh, psychology against emerging markets when actually the bigger risks are still in the United States and Europe and we have a particularly uh, uh, you know uh, 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 unnerving sort of uh, period coming up we have the possibility of uh, uh, obviously change in rates in the US yeah. um, and if that fails maybe more QE yeah. um, and that could be quite disruptive particularly after a very long period of this huge expectation of a change in interest rates and the US Fed is in between a very difficult position on the one hand of, of wanting to be prepared for inflation when it comes because at the moment they're all completely behind the curve on the other hand not causing recession and it may well be there's no middle ground so if you look at emerging markets um, as a place to reduce risk not just somewhere you invest in for extra risk and extra return and you start looking at the macroeconomics and you start getting up beyond the hype you realize actually they're relatively safe when it comes to the big macroeconomic risks and uh, you know on the point of if we're going to talk about specifically India very clearly India is benefiting uh, from lower oil prices uh, it's, it's got a huge potential um, uh, to, to be unleashed but it's already growing much much stronger than any developed wor uh, world country so I think there's a lot of uh, good news which just isn't being priced in you know, speaking of India, and I'll, I'll talk to you about the Fed in just a moment, but we've had uh, electoral results coming in from the yeah. Bihar elections, which have gone against the government. And there is caution now on the strength of the reform process and whether this government will be able to push through the kind of reforms that it would have liked to. How are foreign investors going to read what's happening on the political scene in India? Not good. Um, clearly, the VAT is a big disappointment. There has been. You mean uh, the GST? Yeah, the G sorry, the GST. And, uh, and the... Um, the inability to push even that after a, a, such a huge sort of effort um, is, is, a, is a major blow and you know one hopes that uh, uh, there can be sort of reinvigorated uh, uh, energy um, but the idea that uh, it was good enough to have a, a lower house majority you know we might have to revisit that on the other hand um, expectations about uh, you know everything happening tomorrow which is obviously common in in, in for investors and, and market commentators is, is always a little bit unrealistic uh, politics always trumps economics we have to remember that and uh, India's no exception no exception at all uh, but it is also the case that the reform agenda um, you know can't really uh, be strayed from too far without alienating uh, investors as well sorry alienating citizens as well uh, whilst there may be, you know, deep antipathy, uh, antipathy to um, antip antipathy <laughs> to the way in which uh, uh, reform has been progressed, um, you know, there isn't really an alternative. And I think one of the great things about the, the election result, uh, you know, 18 months ago, was this idea that reform was was, was very much coming. And I think to, to be let down on that would be a big big disappointment for, for India, not just for uh, foreign investors. So I think it is, it is problematic. The broad scope of, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, more investment in infrastructure, you know, sound monetary policy, uh, some reforms happening, you know, is still a pretty good environment for foreign investors. There are always going to be problems. Um, but, you know, I hope that uh, even if you just have a lack of other things going wrong, it's still an attractive place to invest. You know, speaking of uh, what we are likely to see the Fed do, and you've spoken about it in your column yeah. where you say that people are myopically looking, looking at the Fed's intentions, do you believe that a Fed hike is coming in December? Is that what you're factoring in? And the impact on emerging markets like India? I think on balance it's not likely, no. I think actually it's very difficult for the Fed to raise rates in December when it's trying to encourage consumers who've been so lacking in activity to, to do their Christmas shopping. I mean, I just don't, <laughs> I don't see uh, uh, much precedent for it. Okay. I think the earliest they can realistically raise rates is March. And, uh, and on balance, you know, it may not happen because by then, and that's quite a long way away, uh, we might see other events. I mean, there's a huge amount of, uh, of problems occurring in Europe. We've still got, uh, you know, the whole of the US turning on one piece of data, you know, payrolls. And that, you know, that can go all the way back again. So on balance, I think you're probably going to get QE4 before you get an interest rate. All right, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the Diwali Countdown, but stay with CNN.